Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 51, another seven curious things I saw last week, so let's crack on. Uh, first one is a phrase you will hear more and more of, which is uh, UDC, so these are under display cameras. So this is the, the newly uh, available um, ZTE Axon, so that's a Chinese uh, phone manufacturer if you haven't heard of them. Um, and as you can see or maybe not see, um, there is a camera underneath the display near the top. Um, so uh, unlike the notch that Apple forced us uh, with, that they thought it was a great idea, but I've never been convinced by it, it's, it's a horrible <laughs> option, um, or the hole that you might have seen punched in some displays with a little camera pointing through, um, this has actually gone the extra mile and actually put the camera under the display. So um, you can buy this uh, late December in the UK, for instance. Um, Camera quality is um, is good. Um, apparently, according to initial tests, it's not a, not a brilliant, brilliant camera, but it might just be an effect that the camera is applying to it. Um, and now, where does this go from here? So, um, imagine you're working from home and you're on your big screen in front of you uh, and you have an array of maybe I don't know 64 cameras underneath your screen then it means wherever you are looking at somebody on your screen doing your conference call it can switch to that camera so you're always looking directly at them rather than looking down here at them and the cameras up there so um, probably coming to a, a desktop computer laptop uh, or TV or even probably outdoor advertising sometime soon um, open AI, so uh, open AI are a platform where you can go and experiment with AI, a um, number of ways using sort of visual or audio or whatever, um, so definitely check those out if you haven't already. Um, and Jukebox is one of the projects within there, um, and I just I started um, looking at these or listening to these this week and they're absolutely fascinating. So if you take say um, Nirvana or Queen for instance, and you take all of Queen's catalogue um, and you play all the music into this AI, you train the algorithm, and then you play the first half of Don't Stop Me Now, and then maybe cut it, it'll then try and continue the song itself. Um, you can also give it the lyrics, and it will try and weave those in as well, or it can try and generate the lyrics itself. So um, it's really, really fascinating what it thinks the end of Bohemian Rhapsody should be, or Daft Punk, for instance. Um, so definitely check it out, because it's really fascinating. It could be the future of music, where you just essentially send... The, the theme of an artist and it can just make up the rest of it. So um, uh, you'll probably see this in lifts coming <laughs> soon where it'll just generate random nonsense for days on end. Um, France uh, have announced that they are up for making cyborg bionic soldiers. Um, so their ethics committee, their military ethics committee, um, have said it's, it's okay, it's imperative in fact, that they do lean into this. Um, so their competitors, uh, on the military stakes at least, um, so you've got people like Russia, America, China, um, are all doing this, so they've announced various things, um, some more funny than others, I guess, so you've got people like Russia who um, announced that they have mastered telepathy um, and they have trained their soldiers to read documents within safe, so just be aware that nothing is safe anymore, they can just read them with their minds. Um, that was generally the gist of that. Uh, you've got China, for instance, announcing that they are using CRISPR, so um, gene editing techniques um, to give their soldiers superhuman powers, so that could be, for instance, extra stamina, could be holding breath uh, longer if you are in the essentially the Marines. Um, and also things like if you are um, captured and you need to remain calm under interrogation, um, those sorts of things. So um, they're also looking at bionic implants. So that might be, um, you know, the, the American army have already shown they have this kind of third limb. So for carrying exoskeletons or an exoskeleton for carrying equipment, also holding guns and things like that, whilst you do other things. Um, and just basic stuff like communicating with your other um, uh, your teammates, I guess, on the battlefield. So knowing where they are um, and maybe having night vision, friend or foe vision, so you could spot somebody and know whether uh, they are an enemy or not. So all of that stuff is kind of contained in what um, France was saying that they should really be leaning into. Part of the ethics um, of this is what happens when these people return back to um, normal civilian society. So you've got somebody who is um, an amazing fighter, has super strength, has a flight or fight technique that is you know, beyond normal um, and for instance can be calm in the face of adversity. Now what are those people like in the pub on a Friday night? Um, what are they like in a family situation and likewise what are they like in business? You know if all of a sudden they have logic and they have calm when all others are losing um, their head around them then how does that work in business? So what are the ethics of integrating these people back into society? So um, 
probably the French uh, announcement or the French announcement is mostly just, yeah, we need to be seen to be doing this as well. Um, but there are a lot of extra things that come with this. Um, solid state batteries, I won't go into this too deeply of the science behind this, but um, essentially a, a lithium battery is what you've probably got in most things around you right now, including um, cars. So a lithium ion battery needs a relatively bulky um, anode, and you've got people like Tesla looking at how can they reduce or make common anodes for, um, for their uh, batteries. So the way this works is uh, lithium ions are the things that really create the electricity. So you have something that the, the white stuff in these pictures can contain the lithium um, um, ions. And then when you need electricity, you basically draw it into somewhere else. And that sort of transfer of these, as you see in this thing, the little green dots, actually creates the electricity. So it's the, the movement of the ions that creates the electricity. So you need a big bulky electrode, you need some sort of goop to allow the, the, the ions to move in a traditional battery. This new battery is um, has been the holy grail of uh, lithium ion batteries for a few years, it uses a solid anode. So it's uh, all the lithium ions are in the white goop as normal, but when you need the electricity, it basically draws it through this kind of substrate, this solid substrate, and it creates met metallic lithium as um, the basically the bit where it goes to. So it can actually create a, a higher density of electricity. Um, it's smaller. And also because it's a denser and there's less to it, then it also can charge a lot quicker as well. So this can actually charge in 10 to 15 minutes. So imagine how this revolutionizes um, vehicles if you can charge your car in 10 to 15 minutes. So Nissan are looking at this. They've said they're going to uh, unveil a car next year, whether they're going to launch it or not, we don't know, but they're going to unveil a car with this technology in it. So look out for that. Um, slightly strange one. Um, we've got a few strange ones coming. So this is um, uh, Disney World, I think it is in Florida. Um, they have been photoshopping on masks. You might notice a lady in the, the back of this, uh, this kind of snapshot on the ride um, has a seemingly weird mask. That's because it's been automatically added um, by the photo system. So, um, so what a weird thing to do, but um, you look at the, the principles behind this is like if you're the guys in the front row and you've, uh, you've been on this ride and you want the photo, what you don't want is somebody in the back row who has taken off their mask and has, has broken the rules essentially. Um, you don't want them in your photo. So you can kind of see why they're doing it, but also I thought it was really interesting how this is also about um, public awareness um, so the people in the back row will probably see their photo and go, hang on a minute, I've been forced to wear a mask and I didn't want to wear a mask, but they go, mm, okay, yeah, I was actually breaking the rules. So um, it's part public awareness um, and it's also part um, commercial um, astuteness, I guess, um, but what a weird thing to have noticed people doing. Um, another use for drones, uh, attaching flamethrowers to them and burning wasps and hornets' nests. Um, so um, putting flamethrowers on drones is not fantastically new. We've seen um, them being used for taking things like plastic bags off power cables um, because those can obviously be, um, become an issue. So, um, and also clearing trees. So we've seen chainsaws on drones as well. Um, but this one was actually the Blue Sky Rescue Group in China who are um, more well known for um, sort of um, helping out in uh, natural disasters. Um, they were called essentially from a, um, a region that was saying we're having a lot of problems with people getting stung and a lot of people die through hornet stings. Um, so they crowdfunded a drone, uh, put a flamethrower on it and um, basically went at the, the hornet's nests. Um, now clearly if you are pro hornet's nests then this is not a great thing to see but um, other than that what a weird use for um, uh, a drone. Didn't see that coming. Oh, it's 2020, so we should have seen that coming. Um, Google have added 50 more animals to their augmented reality view. So um, if you haven't seen this, uh, maybe it's just um, escaped you. You just not search for the, the right stuff, essentially. There are a bunch of animals um, that are available on Google uh, search on your mobile phone. So for instance, if you search for donkey or a giraffe, or um, all of the new ones on the right hand side, so Border Collie for instance, um, and scroll down on your phone, you will see a little box that says, you know, view in 3D, and then you can then view it in augmented reality. So it gets the lighting right for your uh, location. So if you're indoors or outdoors, it will look like it's, it's kind of where you are. So definitely check those out. If you're a big dog fan, uh, then you will notice a huge amount of uh, dog variants in the latest release. So I'm um, not quite sure what prompted that, but <laughs> clearly somebody's gone dog uh, crazy. That's good. So um, with that, we are done. Thank you very much, and I will see you next week.